Even though Banjo-Kazooie and Mario 64 are two of the most beloved Nintendo 64 3D platformers, their gameplay and visual styles are about as different as they could be within the genre. What if we just try to combine them? Since both these games run on the same console, it is possible to import the Banjo maps one-to-one -one into Mario 64. In this mod from 2012, they ported the maps but not Banjo's engine and they were left with none of the advanced materials that Banjo-Kazooie uses. Banjo Kazooie runs on an updated Fast 3D version and the devs of Banjo Kazooie used more advanced N64 features. Lucky for us, the DCOM team has backported Banjo's Fast 3DX renderer into Mario 64. The level data is structured very differently between the two games, so I had to implement a scene interpreter in Mario 64. And since Banjo and Mario don't operate on the same world scale, the Banjo levels look pathetically small in Mario 64 by default. Adding a scale modifier to my scene interpreter, this is a bit more appropriate size. Voice. The level data was gathered by UED, the same guy that made a crossover hack over 8 years ago. This was an ongoing dream. The levels now all render one to one on Mario 64. He used Banjo's backpack, the tool that the Banjo community uses to mod Banjo Kazooie, to rip all the level data. So shoutouts to that tool for making this easily possible. Because both games are 3D platformers, the levels actually work really well with Mario's movement. The Banjo levels are a little flat comparatively, but they're also much bigger. Common opinion is that Banjo had the prettier levels, but Mario had more satisfying movement. Put them together and you get something great. Unfortunately, my scene interpreter gets rid of all the culling effects, but luckily my optimized Mario 64 engine is a lot more powerful than the Banjo-Kazooie engine, so it might run well enough on N64. Because Mario 64's collision engine is super messy, I had to create a separate collision map in Blender to make sure that Mario can't clip through all the walls in the game. I had to redo effects like texture animations, and I have to edit the hex files to get rid of a bit of the geometry. For example, these stairs here have different levels of detail that would all be rendering at the same time. Since Mario 64 uses water boxes and Banjo Kazooie uses water triangles, which is a lot more variable and applicable than the water boxes, I also had to implement this system. Luckily, that wasn't too difficult, and now Mario can swim down the rivers and not bug out like this. CPU hacker ended up converting the entire Banjo Kazooie OST into Mario 64 sound font for us. Listen to these five snippets and convince yourself. I think you'll like them. So we can get a new, fresh, but familiar OST. formats for the music between the games are similar enough that most effects can be taken over one to one. And hearing the Banjo-Kazooie song so well converted in a Mario 64 sound font is magical, I love it. UED also ripped all the actors. I had to reskin and reanimate those and write all new code for each one of them so they would work in Mario 64. Banjo Kazooie's animation system allows things like scale and translation between the bones, while Mario 64 system does not. It was technically possible to implement this as well, but I never ended up doing this. And since the NPCs in this game have different mission designs and animations from Banjo Kazooie anyway, I would have to make some animations at any rate. Unfortunately, some of my animations ended up less expressive, both because I'm not that good an animator and because we're also missing the translation and scale features. However, I still think they are good enough to work in a game. We ended up putting 12 jiggies in every world and 20 in the overworld for a total of 140 jiggies in this game. And we gave Mario a handful of new powers to make the new jiggies more interesting. Collecting a jiggy does not boot you out of the level in this game and you're free to explore everything. I tried to get a good mix of both Mario and Banjo design, meaning we'll have both platforming missions as well as missions with a lot of character interactions and world 
world building. Considering how mixed opinions on Chewie were, I believe this is the right direction for this game. I'd like to think of the design goal to be similar to that of Mario Odyssey, except the Jiggies are less trivial than Moons, and there's more world building, which as a downside also involves a bit more text. It's pretty similar to the Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time crossover hack I've made in around 2017. There are some simple reoccurring missions, like the note collectathon playing a familiar melody, the 100 notes or the Jinjos. I still have to port this mod to my optimized RTYI engine with all its new features. This will make the game a lot more beautiful and it will give us neat bonus effects like you can see in this video. Currently 110 out of 140 jiggies are implemented in this. I'll be completely upfront and I'll tell you that I only work on this game one out of every probably 14 days. Most of my time is spent on other mods like RTYI and this one is the back burner. That's why it took over two years to even get this far and it is going to be a good amount of time before this game releases. I hope you guys are looking forward to this anyway. The next time I talk about this mod, it will most likely be either a release trailer or a release date announcement. Shoutouts to my Patreons for supporting me on this journey of making all these mods. I know that this mod isn't what most people subscribe for, but I hope that this comes off as a neat bonus for you guys. Leveraging the maps that already exist in Bench Kazooie allows me to make a lot of content without spending too much of my free time on this, which I really enjoy. This feels like a great game design exercise and working on this is actually pretty fun. That is all from me today. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.